I'm Dr. Yosemite Sam with a lesson today in the latest research on genetic bottleneck work. Now a genetic bottleneck means that all the genes in a species are compressed down to only a few members of that species and a lot of the DNA gets squeezed out. But there's a second meaning for genetic bottlenecks that we're grappling now with at our research station high in the mountains at Alamogordo. Here's a bottleneck. I'm going to put my glasses on for safety. This bottleneck of an actual bottle will, will tell us, in effect, it'll be a, a symbol of how a genetic bottleneck works. I want you to, this is just a harmless uh, anhydrous water with some food coloring. I'm going to pour it out. Watch the way it pours. Now you can see it pours very unevenly. The water sort of glugs out and then it stops because air has to come back inside the bottle. Then it glugs out again. Air has to come back inside the bottle again. And as we do this, we find that DNA works the same way. DNA goes forward in evolution and then it comes back again. There is a forward and backward motion in which species gain traits and then they, they regress. There's a retrograde motion back into some of the species that we know uh, through hominid and hominim uh, development, such as Piltdown Man and Florida Man. And it goes like this. Now, come on into the lab and we're going to see how this works. Here at the Data Analysis Center of our laboratory, we use a variety of methods to analyze our results. Let's take a look at this first slide now. Mostly we rely on retrovariant approaches measuring changes over time, as you can see. You can see on the y-axis how this takes effect in a strictly Boolean sense, although some uncertainties do remain. Now on the second slide, let's see now. This shows the role of phospholipids and related compounds in DNA methylation, which has a profound effect on the psyche. Third slide. This one shows the sigmoid type decline in ecological effects. You'll, you'll note that all of them go down to zero, illustrating the fate, inevitably, of the passenger pigeon, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and others. And finally, this line graph, our fourth slide, shows a whole lot of carbon and a whole lot of hydrogen doing what it is that carbon and hydrogen do in some cases like this, and I, of course, don't have to explain any of that to you. Now, so much for methods. Our conclusion is that central mechanisms of evolution do sometimes shift into a retrograde motion, in effect a little bit like the planets, and that species lose valuable traits that they have acquired through natural selection. We find that this novel process discovered here for the first time is something we call atavism, and we feel that there's a clear application of it uh, in the political world at this time. Thank you very much for listening.